the stage is set. The riders are ready. Three world champions will begin their title defense. Red Bull Crashed Ice 2018. Are you ready? If you're new to the sport of ice cross downhill, you're in the right place. If you're an old hand at the sport, tonight will be an exciting ride. Welcome everyone to the first major event of the ice cross downhill world championship tour 2018. I'm your host Troy Mannering for the season opener here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Since 2012, the state of hockey has been transformed into the state of ice cross downhill and is also home to a two-time world champion in this sport. What does this all mean for today? It means a host of hungry athletes will be vying for important points on the overall tour. And for you, our viewers, it's an opportunity to learn more about this amazing sport. So here is a quick guide to Red Bull Crash Dice. Fast, physical, tactical. This is Red Bull Crash Dice. Men and women from up to 25 different countries race down towering ice tracks at speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Heats of four skaters or riders compete head to head with the fastest two advancing until four are left standing for the final. Red Bull Crashed Ice is part of the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship alongside the Riders' Cup, with every event earning the Riders' vital World Championship points. After 10 events, the Riders with the highest number of points will be crowned the 2018 Ice Cross Downhill World Champions. Alongside me again for 2018, a man who spent four seasons competing on the Ice Cross Downhill World Championship, our expert, Reed Whiting. Great to be here again, Troy. Super stoked to be back in St. Paul for the first Red Bull Crash Ice of the season. This is actually the third stop on the tour with two Riders Cup before. These are events put on for riders, by riders, open to anyone to get into this sport and compete at a top level of Red Bull Crash Ice. And there we see Cameron Nas warming his legs up before his racing. And Mirko Lati, the junior world champion, looking to do it again. And Marco Delago clowning around. And Reed, you're absolutely right. Marco Delago, by the way, one of those guys who organizes the Riders' Cup. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first two Riders' Cups events of this series. <laughs> This season's first Riders' Cup took place in Wagrain, Austria. Last year's winner, Veronica Vindisch, successfully defended her title on the 300-meter-long naturalized track and celebrated the perfect season opening. In the men's league, last year's champion Cameron Nas took the win and set the pace for the 2018 season. I'm happy I could come out with the win here to start the season. The second event took place in Cromontana, Switzerland. It is the country's first permanent ice cross downhill track, and it hosted local rider Anais Moran for her debut win. The race went really well for me. I won for the first time in ice cross downhill in my life, so of course I'm so happy. In the men's event, fellow local and 2013 world champion Derek Wedge outpaced the rest of the field to kick off his season's campaign. 
All right, there you go. So after those first two events, we've got Denis Novosilov on top of the overall rankings. Marco Delago skating tonight is in second place, and we see down in fifth place Cameron Noss. He's got a few points, but tonight's all about the big game and gaining points here on the tour at the Red Bull Crash Dice. As the annual Winter Carnival is fast approaching here in St. Paul, it's appropriate that King Boreas and Queen of the Snows, they officially open our contest and give it their blessing. And there we see some of the flags on patrol. And of course, Vulcan and his mischievous clan on the track there at the bottom. Speaking of the track, our own Reed Whiting took a ride down this amazing track a little earlier this evening. Let's see what he made of it right after we take a detailed look at the 2018 course here in front of the iconic Cathedral of St. Paul. The Red Bull Crash Dice season opening in St. Paul. 2018 has a redesigned track that will test the will and skill of all who attempt to finish here. Five seconds from the start, athletes will have to deal with the massive cathedral drop. Getting a boost of speed, heading towards the brand new BF Goodrich grip turn. One wrong move and you're a tread mark. Speeding up again down the steep ramp, the riders have to navigate a tricky right hand turn and prepare for the Hyundai end section, which is a gap to drop leading to the long straight, which includes a devious set of speed rollers and the difficult double kicker. Assuming the competitors get through all of this unscathed, the final obstacle before the finish is the infamous corner booster. Manage that and the last sprint is all about position and foot speed to the finish line. Here we go boys and girls back in St. Paul for this track preview and I need a little redemption baby because this track has been giving me a proper beating all week. All right, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Five seconds. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Open. Oh! Go. Dropping in. Ooh, got to gain some speed for this big jump, and I'm sending it. Woo! That was a good landing. A little too fast coming into here. Taking, saying low over the corner, low, low. Dropping in my favorite section, the Hyundai N. Coming down, getting a little pump here, and coming into the straightaway. Now I got to keep my speed here because I got the big wall ahead of me. But this thing has been eating me up. The dyno. I did it. I did it. I did it. And we're going to finish this puppy off with a proper. Woo! And that's that. You better be ready, baby, because St. Paul Red Bull Crash Ice is coming at you now. Green Whiting, uh, quite a contender, so Green takes his way through. Awesome POV run, Reed. Thank you very much. That was fun to watch. And we're going to take a quick look now at some highlights from the round of 64. A couple of interesting heats here. This one in particular, we've got Pakom Schmidt and Guillaume Bouvet Morissette. There was a great battle going on in this one, Reed. Talk us through this one a little bit. Yeah, this was all Pacom throughout the race, but the interesting part was T-Top coming a little hot over the dyno bridge, giving it Guillaume a chance, and it's a straight foot race to the finish. Guillaume came out on top. And that one went straight to video review, but you can see there Guillaume's foot came across that line clearly ahead, so he moves on to the next round. The other heat that we wanted to look at at this one contained Luca Delago, and this was a fantastic battle right to that huge corner jump. Yeah, crazy there at the end. It just looked like a little contact between Johnson and Delago. They couldn't, both of them could not keep their feet. <laughs> Everybody's going down here. Then it's just a battle clawing up to the top. Johnson won that and is moving on to the next round. We never, ever, ever see Luke out in the round of 64. I yeah. think the whole crowd is shocked. That's a disappointing one for Luca, but Kale Johnstone and Matt Johnson moving on. And uh, it is official. We're underway here. Round of 32 coming up. It's cloudy, but it's pretty warm outside. What's that going to mean for these athletes on this course? You know, typically the freezing system does a really nice job of keeping this ice smooth. I was out there about an hour ago. This track is fast, hard. It's going to be some awesome heats. All right, plenty of people here, and these are, these are people that are going to really enjoy that. And there, the Cathedral of St. Paul is going to ring in this event officially.
right, so moving into the round of 32, this is where it starts to get real serious for these guys. The adrenaline will start to ramp up a little bit. First heat in the gates with Marco Delago, Killian Brown, Tommy Mertz, and Dan Witte. Monster heat here. All right, a great start, and right away, Killian Brown and Marco DeLago trying to take that early lead. Marco DeLago so fast out of the gate, but there's some carnage already at that BF Goodrich grip turn, and everybody's all over the place. And look at this. Ha <laughs> ha! It is Tommy Mertz moving through the Hyundai N section to take the lead. Marco DeLago shoulder to shoulder with him now over the Dino Bridge. A good glide to make the pass there at that last corner jump. And Marco DeLago is going to make the win on this one with Tommy Mertz going with him. Boy, that could have gone any which way with that heat. It was crazy from top to bottom. You know, I was just about to say before they started, these are like three four of the top riders. They've all finished in finals. I knew something was going to go sideways, and from the start it did. Great jump by all four guys, but as soon as we come into this first section, the speed checking starts and the chaos ensues. Tommy Mertz tries for a little pass. Killing runs in the back. Marco goes down. Witty comes out on top from fourth to first. Then Marco battles back in the inside corner, pushes Killing to the outside, I mean, total chaos, and then crazy enough. Dead comes, last is Tommy Mertz at the moment. Dead last is Tommy Mertz. Comes in first, coming out of the Hyundai N section, and then it's all Marco and Mertz. Marco coming in first along the finish. Insane to the membrane right there, baby. That's what we love to see. That heat was bananas. That is Red Bull crash dice right there, baby. Love it. Tommy's got some fans. I like them choppers. All right, so Marco Delago, Tommy Mertz moving on to the next round. And it is getting serious now. Next heat in the gate at the top, Michael Julianello, Iggy, along with Daniel Bergeson, TJ Obrecht, and Yuri Cruz. Heavy concentration by Danny Bergeson, and it pays off. He gets a quick shot out of the gate, but look at this, Iggy right on him as they come up towards that big, hard BF Goodrich grip turn. Iggy taking over the lead from Daniel Bergeson, and right on top of Daniel Bergeson, TJ Obrecht doing his best to try and catch up and take that all-important second spot. Meanwhile, Julianello opens up a bit of a lead coming towards that big corner jump to the finish. He's on his feet. Daniel Bergeson makes the corner clean as well. And Iggy is pumped. Daniel Bergeson goes with him. TJ Obrecht unfortunately eliminated along with Yuri Gruss. That was a nice heat there. Three nice Americans, heat. yeah. And it looked like Obrecht was coming up the back. I thought he might push Bergeson a little bit there and make something happen, but Bergie had it clean. Let's watch this coming up to the dyno. Iggy taking it really smooth. And look at Obrecht going for a pass. Bumping and grinding a little bit with Berge. Berge, Berge protected his line yeah. really well. Though. Shut the door to the finish. I Iggy. like how Uni Unionello there just tapped that deck a little bit, you know, trying to maintain contact with the ice. Absolutely. He's one of our guys. Big improvement from last year. Told me he's been training his butt off all year. Probably more than any American I talked to, and it's really showing. Well, Danny Bergeson had the great start, but uh, Iggy managed to catch up with him and uh, and actually pass him early on in the race, and then it was all him the rest of the way down. All right, next heat in the blocks at the top with Jim DePauli from Switzerland, Stephen Cox from Canada, who's been showing a lot of potential here. Hopefully he can keep his race face on. Matt Johnson and Cale Johnstone also in the mix here. Really evenly matched heat here. All these guys could come through. Good solid start. Jim DePauli taking the whole shot here. Checking the brake. Stephen Cox trying to catch up. He's got a bit of a wacky line though. Oh! But he closes the door on everybody at the BF, at BF Goodrich grip turn and comes down through the Hyundai M section in the lead. Jim DePauli, he hip checks the wall and he goes down. 
He's back up on his feet though, but he's dead last at the moment. Stephen Cox holding it down and it looks like it is Cale Johnstone in second place. This is gonna be a good move up for Cale Johnstone and for Stephen Cox, taking out a couple of strong contenders here with Jim Napoli getting eliminated. Oh, and we just heard the buzzer there. That sound that you heard in the background means that I do believe we have a rider protest. Let's see what happens here. There was a little contact there. Not sure what happened, it was in the Hyundai end section. So let's get this replay going and see what's up. There we see under review protest by the athlete. And you'll see uh, if we get a camera shot of it, there is a red button right at the exit gate of the ice. And if a, if a rider feels like there was some illegal contact on course, they're more than welcome to come over and immediately tag that red button there. You see it. And, uh, but they have to tag the red button before they leave the ice. So we're going to have a look at this here. We'll hopefully get some slow-mos. And this will be studied very, very closely by our course judging staff and Christian Papillon in particular, who is up there watching all of the action on his review monitors. All right, let's watch here. Everybody breaking really solid into the BF Goodrich turn. Johnson really trying to make a move, getting a little handsy there, but Jim DePauly shutting the door. And Stephen Cox making a nice play on the inside. I mean, if I had to guess, I would say maybe Matt Johnson didn't like the way that Cox put a hand out there, but it didn't look to me like he pushed him back or hindered his, his uh, movement. It could be right there as well, so it's any guess. We're just, we're speculating here. It's gonna come to our judging crew to make the final call on that one, but Matt Johnson, is the athlete who pushed that button at the finish line. Yeah, it's tough in that corner. Everybody was so tight. I don't think anybody purposely did any foul. I think that was a pretty clean corner. Cox just got the best of it, made a really nice move on the inside. We see DePauli in the back there. Again, in that first roller section, guys are just not taking that quite right. Yeah, it's it's a real tough one. It's like uh, you heard earlier on, it's, it's a devious one. But Cox is a solid guy as well. I mean, he uh, he's not a small guy. He's not huge either, but he's definitely solid. So trying to push him out of the way if he's got line is going to be really difficult. Johnson with a pretty tough ball. Not a happy man. Now, wait a minute. Was it Johnson that pushed that button and he didn't make it to the finish line? Yep, Maybe he's... it was Jim DePauli. I... So let's see. Now, this is. It looks like this is the area that they're looking at right here. So you see protest by athlete, a lot of review, and uh, just waiting on the final call by the judges. And it looks like protest is denied, so it will stay with Stephen Cox and Cale Johnstone moving on to the next round. Well, there you go, folks. You've just witnessed your first protest here in St. Paul. Solid call there, I agree. Yeah, I think so too. All right, moving back to the top of our course, heat number four. Mirko Lati, our junior world champion up there in the gate along with Antti Tolvanen, Florian Graf and Shane Renault. And uh, there you see Shane Cox, Cale Johnstone, as Stephen Cox, excuse me, and Cale Johnstone, happy to be moving on. Good out of the start once again, Antti Tolvanen, but this is a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder race. Shane Renault, good move into that first corner, and he's got himself a little bit of a lead there. Mirko Lati chasing him down hard, though. Mirko Lati, as I mentioned, is the junior world champion. And he's been showing some real skill. It looks like he's gonna try and catch up, but oh, he goes no. down, he loops out, and that leaves the door wide open for Antti Tolvanen. Florian Graf takes oh, advantage of me, that. Oh, excuse me, Florian Graf, through. good call, Reed. Wow. Oh, and Mirko Lati is not a happy camper there. Both fins not making the wall. Wow, that was unexpected. Yeah, really surprised there, but I think that the adrenaline got to Mirko Lati, and uh, he came over that dino jump just a little bit too hot, landed on his heels. Let's watch the replay and see what actually happened. Yeah, Shane Renault really looking good here. He beat Latte two races in a row now. Look at these guys battling on the turn, getting caught up in the tires. I think the mistake that was made here 
Lati was getting a little overzealous here, trying to chase down Renault. He had no need. He had a very clear second place, but he clearly wanted to win. Pushed too hard over the dyno, overshot it, and down you go. Oh, even Shane Renault struggled there. But I think that comes down to experience. Mirko Lati is still a young gun. And, uh, you know, he didn't really think about that whole one and two moving on aspect, and he wanted to win it like it was the final. Yeah, that shot actually showed him he caught his foot on the top of the dyno bridge. I haven't seen that happen yet, but it totally threw him off. No way you're going to land that. All right, Shane Renault, Florian Graf moving on. And our next heat is in the gates at the top with our reigning two-time world champion, Cameron Nas. Michael Urban, Pavel Klintrup, and Daniel Gola here. I think the only guy that's really going to provide a little bit of a test is Pavel Klintrup in this one for Cameron Nas. Let's see. Uh, maybe Daniel Gola as well. Cameron Nas once again with a super solid start. The rest of the guys is basically about playing chase. Pablo Klintrup moves into second place. Danny Guola right there in third with the funky outfit. Danny Guola is a tall guy, long legs, good strider. Let's see if he can catch up with Pablo Klintrup, who's got a really solid glide. Guola's going to be pushing hard here. Absolutely. He's going to pull, uh, pull all the stops out to try and catch up with Klintrup. And he might get a chance here to put those long legs across the line. Oh, that one's going to go under review for sure. That was tight. I think that's about the closest finish with the skates across that finish line we've seen. It was clear Cameron Noss got that one without much drama, but it was between Pablo Klintrup and Danny Guola. And we'll see what the pictures say at the end of the day. Let's go. Yeah. A lot of reviews tonight, a lot of close races. So Urban was out early. A little toe pick, and this is all Nas in the lead with big battle by Gual and Klintrup. I thought Gual would make an earlier push, but just till the end, he didn't really get going till the finish line stretch. Strides a couple more than Pavo, but I don't know if it was enough. Look at him come down the stretch, kicking that long leg out. Whoa! I think that uh, Pavo's going to get it with his left foot. Absolutely, but it was close. Oh, how wow. close was that? That's about the closest we've seen yet today. Wow, that was really close. Great race. And there we have it, Nas and Klintrup moving on. Another good, clean race by Cameron Nas, who's showing a lot, a lot of skill. I mean, this kid is unbelievable. If he can three feet, that is going to be an incredible feat here. All right, back to the top. Heat number six, Maxwell Dunn, Patrick Mertz, Derek Wedge, and Sam Nadeau. Good start, Max Dunn, Patrick Mertz trying to get the early setup into that first turn. Patrick Mertz gets the advantage, but oh, he trips out, Topix goes down, Max Dunn moves back in to first place, and Sam Nadeau straggling in there to second place, but he's got a former world champ right at his shoulder in Derek Wedge. Can Sam Nadeau keep it together again? Has that problem on that corner. And Derek Wedge has got the momentum for the finish line. It's oh. going to go to Wedge. Wow. Close. And the mistake there was Sam Nadeau right over that dino jump. Again, he took it too hot, landed too far down. Yeah, losing it a little bit can not cost it quite as bad in round of 64. Getting in these later rounds with top guys like Wedge in your heels, you cannot make a mistake and prove right there. Now, that was a little tricky. Looks like Burks got caught up in some ruts, slowed down a little too much. But look at Nadeau down this stretch. Looked really smooth, but coming over the dyno, down on one knee, Wedge just kept his composure, kept his speed, went to the outside, and it was no match at that point. Wedge smoothly takes the lead over Nadeau, and a nice finish.
still all guys pretty close. Great heat. Nice job, Wedge. Derek Wedge is looking really solid this year. Back to form the crowd is when, uh, the crowd when he a won the world championships right. a few years ago. So we'll see how he does the rest of the way through. All right, heat number seven. Go, baby. Up with Hakom Schmidt, Derek Cochemilio, Guillaume Bouvet Morissette, and Jonas Evakoski. Riders ready. Five second warning. Uh, look at that start by Koch. He's been working on those starts a lot, hey? Paco Schmidt right there at his shoulder, though, coming towards the BF Goodrich rip turn. Koch and Schmidt, one and two. Guillaume Bouve Morissette in third place. Not letting those guys get too far away. Bouve Morissette's a tall guy, long legs. Can he make it work for him? Good transition through those rollers. Here comes the Dino Bridge. Schmidt with a good move there. He's got first place, goes a little bit wide on the big jump, and it's going to be Koch Emilio staying safe in second place. And Guillaume Bouvet Morissette and Jonas Ivakoski getting knocked out in this round of 32, heat number seven. Great, Great start man. by Koch, though. Unbelievable. Yeah, he was like a shot out of that gate. You know, Pacom got kind of relegated to the back a little bit, but just really never lost his focus. Really smooth. He qualified third, which is one of his best I think I've ever seen. But Koch, somebody to talk about. We haven't really seen him in too many round of 16s. He had a fortunate race in Finland a couple years ago when he made it to the semis. But he's a guy clearly has done some extra training, hauling those fire hoses around. Uh, something's working for him. Absolutely. He's looking really good this year. Solid skate by Koch. But Pacom clearing that, almost hitting the far boards, but smooth coming in. There is our Polaris Athlete Shuttle taking the guys back up to the top of the course to get them ready for their next heats. And there we see Paco Schmidt. And uh, where's Coach? There he is. Derek Coach Emilio will be joining him in the next round. And we go back up to the top for the last heat in our round of 32. The brothers, Crocs all in there, Scott and Kyle both, along with John Fisher and Tyler Witte. Sidelines, there's lots of fans chanting witty, witty. But it's the Crocs All Boys taking the early lead here as they head into that first turn shoulder to shoulder. Dan Witty trying to get in there, or excuse me, Tyler Witty trying to get in there, but he uh, gets the worst of it. And he and John Fisher back there in third and fourth positions. The Crocs All Brothers, they're shoulder to shoulder here. They know they don't need to worry about it too much. Oop, small mistake by Scott there. Could have gone down, but he's so solid on his skates. And they know they're coming across one and two. They're moving on to the quarterfinals together. Looks like Fisher didn't quite make it over the dino there. Something happened. Oh, he's clawing up. He's still working hard to get up there. Where's the ski poles and crampons when you need them? Pretty in pink, Fishy. <laughs> a little late to the party, but at least you're there. This was all Crocs. So I was looking at them spacing out, trying not to get in each other's way, working together, just like brothers do. And this is when the chaos ensued for Witty. Got a little too bunched up, decided to do a little nose dive off the BF Goodrich drop and Help right fish into down Fisher. with him. <laughs> not good for either of them. Interesting though, I mean, uh, right there, small mistake by Scott, but he's so solid on his skates. Well, he really flew over that corner. He had some speed going. Yeah, he was pushing. I don't think he wanted to let Kyle get first. <laughs> brother competition. All right, there you go. The Proxall boys moving to that next round. So we got our quarterfinal set up. Four heats locked and loaded. Great round of 32. Couple upsets in there. We don't usually see guys like Cale Johnson, new USA rider, moving on the round of 16. Florian Graf, yeah, absolutely. newer guy from Austria. Good to see some new blood moving in. Absolutely, and then we heard this earlier on from Cameron Nas. He likes the juniors coming in there and and uh, bringing up some, uh, some new talent. So uh, good to see.
Now the track here in Yveskula, Finland, is a beast that is made up entirely of natural ice. Oh my goodness, that was unexpected. This is a hard fought battle right now. One of the hardest races I've been to. The second stop of the Ice Cross Downhill World Tour. Red Bull Crashed Ice, live from Evascula, Finland, February 3rd. Dive into your world of Red Bull, your daily source for entertainment, music, sports, and adventure. 24-hour programming and streaming on demand. Available anywhere at any time. Visit redbull.tv. says it all, Troy. There's no doubt this is a state of ice cross downhill. It's been grassroots here going from 2012. We've had 100 athletes compete. Uh, tracks all over the state. Just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year and who knows where it's going to go in the future. on both Croxels. race earlier on and uh, in the men's competition and uh, we saw him he got eliminated so we're not going to see him racing anymore tonight a little bit upsetting for him but he is down in the finish area with Bree McShane our sideline reporter Mirko not the result that you wanted what happened out there I don't know I just crashed in the dyno I don't know we've seen that feature claim a lot of riders today what is the key to getting that right you just need to go faster and don't think anything. It's just, I don't know what's the problem tonight. Thanks, Mirko. All right, well, Mirko clearly not happy about the result there. As uh, we look back, he just got a little bit overconfident on that. You said he tapped his foot at the top of the, uh, the dyno, and uh, that was it for Mirko Latte out early on in the competition here. Yeah, he was our probably biggest surprise of the round of 32 getting knocked out, similar to Luca in the round of 64. Uh, speaking of the round of 32, let's take a look back at some of the highlights here. And this is the heat with Cameron Nas. This was an easy one for Cameron. He got through there with no problem. Uh, the battle really was between Pavel Klintrup and Daniel Guola. And uh, he had, uh, you know, they were really in it, but Pavel Klintrup just had a little bit more pep in his step right there at the finish line. It was so, so, so close. It went to video review 
the end of the day, Pavo's left foot was the winning foot. All right, quarterfinal action coming up here. We've got our first heat in the blocks. This should be a good one. Marco Delago, Michael, Julianello, Higgy, Tommy Mertz, and Danny Bergeson. Three solid Americans, like we talked about, Iggy, up and comer. Riders ready! Five second warning! Oh, wow, look at that start by Iggy. He got out of there faster than Marco Delago. Normally, Marco Delago is a fast guy. Tommy Mertz getting an inside line on Marco, but he went a bit too hot into the BF Goodrich grip turn. Marco Delago now in a heavy battle with Daniel Bergeson trying to get that second place back. And right now it's Julianello out in front with a good solid lead. Look at that. He's got about 10, 15 meters on the other guys. Berge goes down and here comes Marco Delago. Oh, Tommy Mertz does a header over that corner jump and Marco Delago Good to be lucky, lucky to be good. Comes across the finish line in second place and will move on. Now, I didn't see if there was any contact between him and Bergeson. We'll have to see in the review, but it looked like Bergeson got the worst of uh, that dino bridge again. Yeah, that dino has eaten people alive like a velociraptor. It's crazy tonight. Bergie actually went a little too hard, overshot it. Marco has been hammering that thing over and over. He said he had nine runs today in practice. Hitting that dyno perfect every time. So he was ready for that pass like he did. But really right here, Mertz in the back has almost no chance to catch up, but it's all Bergie and Delago right here. Head to head, shoulder to shoulder. Coming on the straightaway, Marco's in the back, but just takes these two rollers a little better. And then over the dyno makes his pass. Bergie just couldn't handle the pressure and the compression. And he's down. Now watch Tommy here, a little out of control. Now he's still laying on the ice. Hopefully he's okay. What a great race by Michael Julianello, though. That was just fantastic. Wow. Yeah, that start was oh. shocking. Who beats Marco out of the start like that? I know. It just doesn't Almost happen. Almost nobody. Red Bull crash dive. Well, there you go. Those two guys happy to be moving on to the next round. You see them in the semifinals. And quarterfinal heat number two in the box. Stephen Cox, Florian Graf, who we were surprised to see moving on, along with Shane Renault and Cale Johnstone. Looks like the guys were pointing to something on the ice down there. All right, well, we got race officials all over the place there, so if there is something on the ice, I'll take care of it. Five second warning! Another great start by Stephen Cox, who has been super impressive tonight. Oh, feeling confident, even throws a little bit of Daffy style in there over that first jump. And look at this, he's got himself a good lead. Shane Renault trying to catch up in second place. The battle there is going to be heavy with uh, Cale Johnstone trailing in third. Shane Renault not that far ahead of Cale Johnstone over the Dino Bridge. Stephen Cox looking solid. A small mistake by Shane Renault. Could it cost him? No, he's got it solid across the finish line. Stephen Cox and Shane Renault will be moving on to the semifinal. Two Canucks are very, very happy right now. Wow. I want to see this replay. It looks like Renault made a real strong move. He started in fourth place. Came through that BF Goodrich corner real solid. Let's see here. And Cox styling it out, getting a little cocky out there. All right, so Renault is coming in here, pushing on the Goodrich. Can't get by, Florian Graf shuts the door, but as they come off this drop, it looks like Renault kept his speed a little more in the corner and come through the Hyundai end section in front, and it was all Cox and Renault from there. Yeah, he just had one or two steps out of that BF Goodrich rip turn heading towards the Hyundai end section. Johnson had a late <laughs> push and it wasn't enough. Steven having a little bit of fun coming into that finish line. He knew he had that one hands down. So Stephen Cox and Shane Renault moving on. I think that's the best 
results so far for Stephen Cox moving on to the semifinal. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen him or Shane in a Red Bull Crash Ice Semi. I don't think so. All right, next heat in the gates at the top. Cameron Noss, Maxwell Dunn. We've seen these two guys battle it out a couple of times in previous events. Pavel Klintrup and Derek Wedge in there as well. And there we see a couple of our ladies. Don't forget, we have the women's semifinal coming up shortly. And these ladies are going to be battling for spots. Yeah. Dunn and Nas, big battle for a quarterfinal here. I gotta say, this is a really tough heat for Cameron Nas, and right out of the gate, Max Dunn showing some seriously impressive starting skills as these two Americans get out to an early lead. He is right on top of Cameron's back pocket. Pavel Klintrup right in there as well. Derek Wedge not that far behind. Cameron Nas starts to open it up where he's so good through those rollers and over the dyno bridge, keeping it solid and low. Oh, Max Dunn does a loop out. He goes over the head, and this is going to go to Pavel Klintrup. A big mistake by Max Dunn. Knocks him out of going on to the next round. Cameron Nas and Pavel Klintrup are the guys that are going to advance. That is a really unfortunate turn of events for Max Dunn because he had such an incredible start. Wedge ain't going on, but he's sure happy. He's happy. And Pablo Klintrup, I was not expecting that, but watching through these two rollers, he's slowly gaining on Dunn. Dunn looks the wrong way, and Klintrup comes oh. on his left. Wow. No contact at all, though, so that was a totally, that was, that was Dunner's mistake, and unfortunately, that cost him big time, and just a little bit of patience by Pablo Klintrup paid off. Unreal recovery, though. Little back roll popping up in the feet and still makes it over the roller. Amanda Trunzo shaking her head at that one, going, ouch. All right, there you go. Cam Nas, Pavel Klintrup moving on. And we also move on back to the top of the quarterfinals. Number four, Heat is in the blocks with Paco Schmidt, Scott and Kyle Croxall, and Derek Cochemilio. Now, I'm curious to know how well Derek does in a start against Scott Croxall. He's been looking good so far. Scott really fast out of the gate. Derek Cochemilio, though, he's in the mix. Kyle Croxall struggling with Paco Schmidt. Wow, that's something you don't see very often. Kyle Croxall getting relegated back by the smaller Paco Schmidt. Quick foot speed by Paco, gets him into second place behind Scott Croxall. Croxall opens up the gates, though, and moves well ahead of Paco Schmidt. Oh, Kyle Croxall goes down. Here comes Koch around the corner on his fanny. Not going to happen for him. Kyle Croxall is eliminated. Derek Cochemilio is eliminated. Paco Smith and Scott Croxall will be moving on to the next round. Really yeah. interesting race right there. I second that. You never see somebody wheel around Kyle like that. That was a greasy pass by Pacom. Let's watch this. That was greasy. What a great word for that. Pacom starts off. Nice start. Kyle takes a jump a little better and pulls in the lead. Pacom just stays patient. Nice landing. Kyle goes a little bit to the right, and Pacom cuts in left, pushes him out, and it's all Pacom from there. Kyle could not get through. Yeah, Beautiful. Kyle, it almost looked like Kyle helped Pacom out there by giving him a push, trying to uh, steady himself, and that just gave the advantage to Pacom Schmidt, and Kyle didn't even make it over the wall because he went down over the dyno bridge. But what a great race. In the precision of that move, I mean, just for how fast you're going, Kyle braked to the right, and by doing that, opened the door for Pac and made that quick decision, cut left, took it. That's my French boy right there. <laughs> Awesome race. Now, it looks like uh, my info screen has just shown me we have a protest by athlete here. Yep, there it is. It's under review. So uh, I don't really, I mean, from the slow-mo that we just watched, Reed, I don't really see where that protest could come from. 
let's see what our judges have to say and maybe there's a, another slow-mo section where they can point out what it is that we're actually looking at and of course the protest will be entirely up to our sports director Christian Papillon to make the final decision on Uh, we got Cameron Niles in there. We got the no, We have some usual suspects right here. Here we go. This is it. Right. So there's a bit so of this a is the section that they're looking at here. The right That's the BF Goodrich rip turn. And squeaking in in front of, of Kyle. To me, that was just a really greasy pass by Pacom. Like I said before, coming in on the inside. Kyle opened the door. Pacom took advantage and closed it. Yeah, one more look. Yeah. Oh, well, Pacom. Uh, right. A little touch right there by Pacom. Don't but if, know that that affected anything, but yeah. If I'm going to say anything, it seemed to me like Kyle grabbed onto Pacom's arm. That's a really hard call. I wouldn't want to be one of the judges. And we see Croxo walking off. Protest denied. Well, there you go. Protest denied. Scott Croxo, Pacom Schmidt, fair race for both those guys, and they will be moving on to the semifinals. And uh, the semifinals are locked and loaded Let's here. So we got finals. Marco Delago, Michael Ulianello, Stephen Cox, Shane Renault in number one, Cam Nas, Paco Schmidt, Scott Croxall, and Pavel Klintrup in semifinal number two. And before that, though, we're going to see the women's semifinal. That should be really interesting because we've got a really nice couple of heats there. Amanda Trunzo against Veronica Vindish, Anais Morant, and Michaela Michelson. And then semifinal number two for the ladies. Jacqueline Leger, Miriam Trapanier, Maxi Plant, and Tamara Kaya. Now, the track here in Yveskula, Finland, is a beast that is made up entirely of natural ice. Oh my goodness, that was unexpected. This is a hard fought battle right now. One of the hardest races I've been to. The second stop of the Ice Cross Downhill World Tour. Red Bull Crashed Ice, live from Evascula, Finland, February 3rd. Dive into your world of Red Bull, your daily source for entertainment, music, sports, and adventure. 24-hour programming and streaming on demand. Available anywhere, at any time. Visit redbull.tv. Skate park as well as going to Acceleration Minnesota all has paid off. What would it mean to you to have a win here on home soil? Can't even describe it. Tons of friends and family out there right now just hoping to get it done and stay consistent. Thank you very much.
All right, well, Cameron Nas keeping a close eye on the uh, live scoring there to see, you know, who he's going to be in the heats with. He'll know this already, though, in advance of things here. So women's semifinal heat number one, Amanda Trunzo, Veronica Vindish, Anais Moran, Michael, uh, Michaela Michelson. Should be a good heat. Yeah, two of these girls actually competed in the Olympics a few years ago. Veronica Vindich in short track and Anais Moran in pair figure skating. Trends are looking pretty focused up there. Let's see here with a little stiffer competition. who had a really good start right there. It looks like she's got the light lead. A nice Moran now takes over first place. Amanda Trunzo, wow, this is a real mix going into that BF Goodrich grip turn. Moran gets relegated back to third place. It is now Vindish in second place behind Trunzo. Michelson looking to come from well back. Trunzo so solid at the moment. Coming over that dyno bridge, Windish staying on her skates. The big jump at the end, and it looks like it's going to be a clean win for Trunzo and Windish. Boy, all four ladies coming across in fine style. Three years ago, we wouldn't have seen that with the skill level here. It's unbelievable how far the ladies have come. Oh, absolutely. Every single race now, they get better and better. This year, it's really shown with athletes like Trunzo, Moran, Vintage. These are people that haven't always been at the top, and they're just right there all with each other. Clearly, Trunzo taking the advantage here. I raced her last night in a kind of a fun run, but I was pretty worried she beat me. So, I mean, that tells you anything. I mean, not that I'm anything special, but uh, she is solid. Good that you retired, perhaps? Yeah, really good that I retired. Now, that looked like a fun race between you two guys, though. Trenzo getting a little loose over the top. Look at one, two, three, four. That All was the girls super together. solid. I mean, last year we saw a lot of the ladies struggling to get up this wall. This year the wall is bigger, and they're making it over no problem. So Amanda Trenzo, Veronica Windisch moving on to the final for the ladies. We're going to load our next heat into the block at the top of the course with Jacqueline Legere, Miriam Trepanier, Maxi Plant, and Tamara Kaya. This should also be a really good heat. And we see the two girls that are eliminated from action there. Too bad. Miriam Trapani on the right-hand side of your screen. Jacqueline Legere there in the pink and white. Keep an eye on these two here. And it kicks off. Maxi Plant, wow, right in there. Maxi Plant getting a good start with Jacqueline Legere. And it looks like she might even manage to get inside second place. Yeah, tries to make a pass, but it doesn't quite work. Oh, Plant gets a little bit too loose in the knees and went down and left the door wide open for Miriam Trepanye, who sneaks into second place behind Jacqueline Legere. Maxi Plant looking focused, trying to catch up with Miriam Trepanye. This is going to be a key moment right here. Maxi Plant pushing hard, but she's not going to be able to do it. Miriam Trepanye, such a good skater, and she manages to get over that last corner jump. Jacqueline Legere had that one unlocked from basically the one quarter mark up there. And then Miriam Trepanye just came in with a good final push. Maxi looked real solid at this point. Those ruts are getting really deep in that corner and Maxi paid the price for getting bogged down in one of them. From there, Trepanier took control. Maxi tried to push, went down again. Even made a little push here at the end. It looked like she might come back, but Miriam just took this last corner beautifully and goes on for the win. So, Miriam Trepanier in second place in the seat, and Jacqueline Legere, they will both be moving on to the women's final. Should be a great final. Another final we have to build up now is the men's final. So, we've got semi number one in the block for our gentlemen. 
Marco Delago, Michael Julianello, Stephen Cox, and Shane Renault in this one at the top as we look at that beautiful Cathedral of St. Paul and that massive audience. Look at the number of people there, Reed. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it's amazing. Pulls my mind every time. It's nuts to butts from the very front row all the way back up that alleyway next to the building there. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic the number of people come out here to enjoy a Red Bull Crash Dice event. So semi heat number one in the gate. Marco Delago with those fast starts. Can he do it? Julianello, he's had really solid starts as well. Stephen Cox, I mean, all of three of these guys or four of these guys are so fast out of the gate. Let's see how it locks in here. Excited to see how this one goes down. Marco Delago, he gets a good start there. Julianello right there with him. Stephen Cox shoulder to shoulder with Iggy into that BF Goodrich grip turn. Julianello with a great move on the inside, takes the lead in front of Marco Delago. Stephen Cox chasing Delago hard in third place. Wow, that was fantastic. Iggy's been working hard in the offseason. You said it, Reed. He has done a fantastic job in this one. And it looks like he's going to take over here. Oh, it's going to be a battle for Whoa. that second spot. Stephen Cox getting real handsy there. This one's going to go under review, but I'm not sure if it's actually because of photo finish. They say that there, but we saw that uh, Marco Delago was just ahead of Stephen Cox. And Stephen Cox, and quite honestly, it seemed like he was being really fair. He had Marco Delago by the waist, but didn't want to knock him down or push him or anything like that. So we'll see. This one's under review, but that was a clear win for Michael Giulianello. That was amazing. Well, yeah, he just came off with a finals in Crans, Montana. Watch him right here. Marco's in the lead, but Iggy makes a really nice turn on this corner. Gets a little more speed coming to the drop. Marco takes it too wide, and it's all Iggy from there. I noticed, though, but uh, those ruts that you were talking about, really a disadvantage for a lot of riders. It seemed like Iggy used those to his advantage, getting a bit of a better dig. It's like rails on a train track, man. Yeah. He got in them and just went. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Cox made a really nice push at the end here. Got a little too high, and Marco just I don't know what happened there. Cox just kind of reached out, grabbed him. Regardless, Marco takes the win. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, that was quite sportsmanlike yeah, of, of Cox. Yeah. You know, he could have pulled him down and, and uh, been a little bit cheaty about it, but uh, I'll give props to Stephen Cox for that one. He was fair. Marco won that one, in my opinion. And there you go. It's confirmed. Marco Delago will move on with Michael Fantastic race right there. That was exciting. All right, next heat in the block with Cameron Nas, Paco Schmidt, Scott Croxo, and uh, Croxo, excuse me, and Pavo Klintrup. <laughs> Marco planning around with the buzzer. Always one for fun. This could easily be a final right here, this next heat. Yeah, wow. absolutely. I feel like Pacom's looking really good. I think he could come out on top here. There's our Polaris athlete shuttle with Anais Morant going back up to the top of the course. She'll be uh, skating in the consolation final for the women as we move back to the top of the course for our men's semifinal heat number two again Cameron Nas, Paco Schmidt, Scott Croxo, Croxo, Pavo Klintrup. Riders ready! Five second warning! Wow, look at that start. Scott Croxo uh, having a little bit of trouble getting out of the gate fast but in good position right now at the BF Goodrich grip turn. And he and Cameron Nas heading down towards that Hyundai N section in one and two positions. Pablo Klintra, Paco Schmidt trailing behind. Look how quick Cameron Nas and Scott Croxall are in the glide. They're so solid there, no mistakes at all. Cameron Nas, Scott Croxall clean across that finish line. 
These two guys are insane competitors against each other, but they're very good friends as well. So uh, that was a great heat right there. And I thought that Paco Schmidt actually had a much better start than Scott Croxall did in this one. Yeah, he did. He just lost it a little bit in that first corner. I mean, you cannot make any mistakes with these guys. Showed right there. Let's watch this start. Scott exploding out of the gate. Tucking, nice drop in. But Pacom, like you said, a little bit in the lead. Scott, I think, got a couple extra strides here. Pushed through, trying to catch up to Cam. That's about the wildest jump I've seen Cam do up of that one as well. Yeah, it's just pretty. Now right here, Pacom looks like lost an edge, cutting it a little too tight. From there, they had no chance to catch up. You're not gonna catch Scott and Cam on a run like that. Well, we've seen this before many, many times. Scott Croxall and Cameron Nass will be going to the final with and against each other. And in that final will be Michael Giulianello. I think that's his first ever final as well. Yeah, for a Red Bull crash ice, he was actually in the Crans Montana final uh, last few weeks ago. All right, there you go. Our finals are set, and that's coming up shortly. Finland is a beast that is made up entirely of natural ice. Oh my goodness, that was unexpected. This is a hard fought battle right now. One of the hardest races I've been to. The second stop of the Ice Cross Downhill World Tour. Red Bull Crashed Ice, live from Ivaskula, Finland, February 3rd. Dive into your world of Red Bull, your daily source for entertainment, music, sports, and adventure. 24-hour programming and streaming on demand. Available anywhere at any time. Visit RedBull.tv. Determining places five, six, seven, and eight in the competition. So there is Veronica Vindish heading up to the top. We'll see her in the final, along with Miriam Trepagne, Jacqueline Legere, and Amanda Trunzo. Miriam Trepagne, as we mentioned off the uh, start with the ladies' competition, won here last year because Jacqueline Legere had that really heavy crash on the roller set. And uh, right now, locked in, we should have our consolation or small final for the ladies. Yeah, and last year, too, remember, Trunzo hit that rut before the wall, and that cost her the world championship. Right. So, That's I mean, right. Trunzo had the world championship locked up in St. Paul last year. Hitting a rut right before the wall, allowed uh, Trepin here to go on. So Anise Moran, Maxi Plant, Michaela Michelson, Tamara Kaja, and Moran goes down right away out of the start. Opening the gate for Michaela Michelson to move into third place around the BF Goodrich grip turn. Maxi Plant out in front at the moment. Well out in front, in fact. She's got a huge lead. Michelson moves into second place. 
Am I missing Tamara Kaya? Where is she? Did she start in this one? I didn't see her in the start she, gate. She did not start. She in this did one. not start. Okay. okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, oh Moran. Look at that. Maxi Plant wins this one, so she'll take fifth at the event. And Anise Moran will take sixth place. So there's some decent points for these ladies. Let's not forget that they're accumulating points on their world championship status here so uh each time they come across that finish line in the top eight it's going to mean points for them yeah it all matters in the end it's going to come down to 50 to 100 points for the world championship so absolutely and they're only getting points during the ice cross downhill world championship events that are red bull crashed ice maxi getting a big time start there getting a little loose over the dino bridge now, something happened. Mikhail just went down, lost her footing here, which gave Anais Moran the open lane for that sixth place finish. I think those starts by Maxi Plant are the, uh, the key ingredient for her. Skating-wise, she's pretty solid, but there are those uh, transitions that she needs to work on a bit. But those starts for Maxi have been really solid. Little figure skating, like we said before, in East Moran, Olympic figure skater for teams. Showing the splits, wow. Loving the sequence on the jersey, too. <laughs> All right, so our women's final is in the gate. The first major points of the World Championship on lock. Veronica Vindish there. She's been solid all day long. She won a Riders' Cup. There's Jacqueline Legere, two-time reigning world champion. Right next to her, Amanda Trunzo. So close last year. She definitely wants it. She's going to be motivated. And of course, Miriam Trepanier, the winner here last year. Can she do another win and gain some good points on the World Championship for herself? Let's see how it breaks down. Here we go. Great start. We're both sitting right on the edge of our seat here as these ladies get out right away. It is Amanda Trunzo and Jackie Legere shoulder to shoulder going into the BF Goodrich grip turn, but it's Amanda Trunzo who comes out with a slight advantage. It's not massive, heading towards the Hyundai end section. Jacqueline Legere staying close. Amanda Trunzo with a good lead. Miriam Trepanier sitting back in third. Legere biding her time, wanting to make sure she gets over that wall clean. Now it's about a foot race. It's going to go to Amanda Trunzo. Trunzo though. does it. She does it. She Woo! wins here in St. Paul. And that's a monkey off her back. And look who's happy. She is fired up. Absolutely fired what up. Man, girl. she is stoked. What a great race by Trunzo. That's what happens when you put in the work right there. Success comes. After literally that wall you see behind you costing her the world championship last year, what a rebound in St. Paul. That is fantastic, a great rebound. Third place for Miriam Trepanier, second place for Jacqueline Legere, and Amanda Trunzo with the win. Plus she's dead even start, maybe a little bit going to Jacqueline, but then they all hit this drop down instead of taking the jump. Somehow it looks like Trunzo gets a little better positioning on the corner and then from her, from there was all Trunzo. The way I see it, it was Jacqueline Legere and Miriam Trepanier with a really solid start. They were slightly ahead of Trunzo, but Trunzo's skating ability and the power in her legs just was the advantage maker for her there. Yeah, she's got a hell of a stride in her. Really taking the corners nice, carrying her speed through the Hyundai end section. Watch her dropping off the drop, really nice. But Jacqueline wasn't giving her much room. Right here, I thought Jacqueline was gonna be able to make a nice pass on the inside. Around this corner, Trunzo just kept her speed. There we see him coming off the dyno bridge. Trunzo staying clean, even. On for the win. A great transition over that final corner hit by Miriam Trepanier as well, which just uh, gave her a little bit of extra speed to the finish area. Now I said that Miriam had third. I'm not really sure now. That might come down to photo finish. Uh, Miriam managed to put on the brakes, but look how close that is. She put on the brakes at the finish line, so that might have actually gone to Veronica Vindish there.
Oh my goodness, look at that. It does look like it's gonna be Miriam Trepanier even with the brakes on. Holy smokes, folks. No, wait, that's hard to tell. That looks like it might be the snow spray that's actually crossing the line. We'll have to get a call from the judges on that. All right, well, we got Amanda Trunzo down with Bree McShane. Amanda, congratulations. How was that race for you? Oh, it was incredible. There's a lot of great girls in that heat with me and to come out on top in front of this home crowd, super excited. You certainly have the crowd behind you. Who have you got here watching today? Oh, friends, family from everywhere, the home crowd in general. Thank you so much, Minnesota. Congratulations, thank you so much. A well-deserved win by Amanda Trunzo. She uh, receives the trophy for first place here at the Red Bull Crash Dice opening event of the 2018 season in St. Paul, Minnesota. Fantastic, and uh, she's gonna be really happy and celebrating that one tonight. Now, just going back to our positioning, it does look like it's official. Veronica Windisch did come across that finish line in third place. Like we talked about before, it's just really evidence of how hard all these girls are working by the skill level you'll see in here tonight. Better and better each and every race, each and every heat. Really pushing the sport. All right, in the gate at the top of our course here in front of the Cathedral of St. Paul, we have the men's consolation final. Once again, this is for positions five, six, seven, and eight at the event here. And there we have Stephen Cox. He's been fun to watch all day long, and I think this is also one of the farthest or, or the best results for him so far. Pavel Klintrup, he's been doing this a long time. He is a skilled athlete in good shape, and there we have Pakom Schmidt. Pakom Schmidt, thank you. <laughs> and of course, Shane Renault next to him in this one. So let's see how this small final or the consolation final goes for positions five through eight. Even Clark's clowning on that one, having a good time. But when it comes down to it, it's all about the serious racing here. Pablo Klintrup with a great start and the early lead. Right behind him, Pakom Schmidt, Stephen Cox is in fourth place now. I guess he clowned a little bit too much as Shane Renault has third place on lock for the moment. Stephen Clark, a bit of a hit on the boards and we're talking about one and two. And that is Pablo oh. Klintrup, but Pakom Schmidt goes down. Stephen Cox gets a bit tangled up. Who can get up and get moving first? And it's going to be close. It's going to be Renault, but that one's going under review because we were so close at the finish line. Pretty clear for me, Pablo Klintrup was the winner on that one, but we've got a photo finish evaluation. And there you see Paco Schmidt. We've seen him in this position before after the Dino Bridge. Unbelievable. That's a monkey on his back, that spot. Absolutely. Little Superman over there. I'm not sure what happened. If he toe picked, he was definitely gaining a lot of speed, trying to make a move on Klintrup. Just didn't happen for him there. Yeah, I think he got a little bit too wild. So coming up here into the BF Goodrich grip turn, Klintrup so solid. Yeah, he is. He's been here before. One of the oldest running vets on this tour. Yeah, Pacom just overshot it. Didn't get to touch down the top. Most guys like to kind of get to that top section, tap it, get your composure for the bottom side. He obviously popped a little too high. And this Down was an goes. interesting hit right here between Shane Renault and Stephen Cox. They yeah. got all tangled up. Cox is really coming in hot there and just took it a little too far. Yeah, that's pretty clear. Shane Renault got it though. <laughs> Stephen Cox having some fun. There you go. So third place in this heat. That means he's going to have seventh place for the event. That's quite a good result for him. I think that's his best result so far. 
Absolutely. Him and Renault for Red Bull Crash Dice races. These are some of their top finishes, I'm pretty sure. So my dark Solid. horse is coming along. All right, folks, this is it. This is the main event here. This is the thing that we've all been waiting for, our men's final here in St. Paul. Look at this lineup, Scott Croxall, Cameron Noss. They've had battles before. There we see Michael Julianello, otherwise known as Iggy. The digital camouflage has been helping him all day long today. Good starts for him. How will he do against the battle hardened guys that are in this heat with him? Right next to Iggy, we have Marco Delago, a former world champion. He knows what it takes to win. Can he do it again here in St. Paul? Only time will tell, about 38 seconds, I believe. Then we have the two-time world champion, Cameron Noss. He wants to have three. Unbelievable. This guy is an incredible talent with tons of skill. And on the skill side, Scott Croxall. It took him a long time to get that world championship title. The monkey was off his back one year, and he took it, and he's been solid ever since. This is going to be a fantastic final. Here we go. Explosive out of the gate. All four of these guys. Cameron Noss with a solid start. Scott Croxall right there with him. Here comes Marco Delago trying hard on the inside. He and Noss, or no, excuse me, he and Croxall get tangled up. And Croxall goes down, moving back to third place. Julianello right behind Cameron Noss. He's got a very strong glider in Scott Croxall coming hard. And look at the pass by Croxall. Noss is down. Noss goes down. Croxall takes the Iggy's lead. down. Here comes Croxall's Marco down. Delago. Marco it's comes a big the battle to the finish. It's Woo! going to be Marco Delago. Michael Julianello and Scott Croxall holding his arm. It looks like he hurt himself. What an unbelievable heat that was. A major mistake by Cameron Noss. Cost him the win here in St. Paul as he had all this locked down and just fell over the Dino Bridge. Marco Delago, he has been solid and he is in such good shape. What a great race and Iggy, oh my goodness. What a fantastic heat for him. A second place for Michael Julianello in the final. That's definitely his best result ever. Let's look at this again. This is definitely one of the best finals ever. Nas has a great start, comes in right on shoulder to shoulder with Delago. Everybody takes a jump real clean. Look at this, just beautiful. Now Scotty comes in a really nice position, blocking out Marco, but Marco keeps his speed really nice over this corner, and they all kind of go down in chaos. Now it's all Iggy and Nas pushing on. From here, I thought that's the way this race was going to end. Nas and Iggy, but these guys in back don't quit. Scott Croxall is so strong. Just a fantastic skater, and his ability to glide is just incredible. Oh, he made an unreal comeback here. Scotty is never out of it. He's such a good skater, such a good glider, like you said. Watch him come down this final stretch, just pushing, striding the whole way. And I thought he had it. And then the chaos ensued. Let's just watch it here, because it is something to behold. Now, this is where guys know they have to push hard. With this crew behind you, the dyno is the thorn in everybody's side. Oh. Nas catches his foot. Scotty takes it a little too far, but it holds his own. Now this is where Iggy hits the boards. Scott takes it a little wide. Nas is clawing up. And then let's watch over this other hip here. I want to see what happened to Scott though. And Iggy goes down. Oh yeah, Scotty Scott hits, hits, hits that boards. board hard. And look at the excitement by the crowd. They are freaking out. One more look at it here. Scott, yeah, he just sailed a little bit wide. Iggy comes in hot on his hip. And Marco Delago. Wow. Oh, yeah, Scott's arm got the worst of that one, his right arm. Iggy, a second place. Scott Croxall, I hope he's okay. What an amazing race, though. And Brad's there is our inspired. starter, Marco Delago, right now down in the finish line with Bree McShane.
Marco, congratulations. It looks like you didn't, you weren't even in it, and then at the last minute you cinched the win. How did you do it? You know, it reminds me a little bit on last year. I also caught up from last place all the way to second. I want to give a huge credit to the other riders. They deserve to win. They crashed, so I take it, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I, I want to say thanks to the guys from Red Bull, Hangman, and AST to make this happen. This is insane. Last time you won this race was 2014, when you won the World Championship. Can we see you do it again this season? Uh, you know, I'm, I took this summer a lot more focus on the preparation, and I feel very good. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. We had a good work uh, at home with our team from the NLZ Steiermark. It was just awesome, and now it's the first race with a victory, and yeah. Congratulations, enjoy the celebrations. Well, that was an incredible race there at the end. Marco Delago taking the first win of the big event season at the Red Bull Crash Dice here in St. Paul. And we saw a really heavy crash by Scott Croxall in the wall. Hope he's okay. Really nice to see Michael Iulianello coming in there hot and heavy for a second place. And that's a fantastic result for him. That's cool. Yeah, he's our biggest up and comer. We talked about him earlier. He told me he trained his bum off all year, looking super solid. Two finals in a row for him. Marco, same thing, two finals in a row. This is awesome to see different guys moving in and out of the top. You know, Cam Nas, a dominant force. Scott Croxel, a dominant force. But we got new blood coming in and out. Great for the sport, great for the race. Absolutely, and it makes it so much more exciting for us and our audience that's watching on TV around the world. It's an amazing result here. Um, you know, nobody likes to see the other guys lose, but there's always got to be a winner and a loser in this case. And there you go, that's our winner here today, Marco Delago. Been a while since we've seen him here. Remember the year, was it 2014? That's took right. Three. Yeah, three out of four by virtue of his incredible starts. And, you know, I imagine in this case, uh, Marco is going to be celebrating this one on behalf of both the brothers, seeing as his brother Luca was eliminated so early on in the competition. Absolutely. Luca is somebody I also thought would be here, semifinal. Um, we're going to look a lot for him this year coming on strong with Marco. They train together. They're really equal riders. Marco just got the luck of your brakes today. <laughs> yeah, I think he's even a little bit surprised, but you know he's been doing a good job, and I'm really happy to see him there. And now it sounds to me like uh, Bree is with Cam Nas. Cameron, you just missed out. How was that for you? Uh, race great all night. Uh, I had a great final there. Marco had great starts all night, so my main priority in that final was just to get out in front of him. And after I did that, I knew I just had to get on my wheels and try to get ahead. But uh, yeah, just a stupid mistake and shouldn't be something that I'm doing. But at least you've still won with the crowd. Who have you got here watching? Yeah, all my friends and family. Sorry if I let you down, but great event. Thank you for coming out. And St. Paul, another amazing event. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Cameron. Well, Cameron clearly disappointed, but you know, he's the guy that's gonna be coming back hard and because he's gonna be motivated to make improvements on the things that he didn't do right here and that was that one mistake. So he's a smart guy, he knows what's going on and uh, he'll be back stronger than ever. And you can see that final push towards the end. What an amazing race that was. And we'll take a look at the event results here for our women and our men. It was a fantastic end for these ladies, but Amanda Tronzo did a great job. Jacqueline Legere in second place, Veronica Vindish in third. So it's pretty international top three for our women, and they're going to take the uh, majority of the points out of the first scorable event for the ladies world championship in ice cross downhill. So really a big congratulations to Amanda and Veronica and all the ladies who did a great job racing here today. And then the uh, event results for the men, Marco Delago, Michael Julianello, Scott Croxall, Cameron Az, unfortunately in fourth place for him, but you know, he's gonna be back like we mentioned, Reed. Oh, absolutely. I don't think this means much for him. You know, with the Red Bull crash dice races, three of the top four count. So this will probably clearly be his throwout race if he does better than the other three. 
Um, just going to make a tighter world championship this year, which is what we want. And that's going to make it really, really fun. So now we're officially three events in with two Riders' Cup and one Crash Dice. Now the Riders' Cups don't count for the ladies. It's practice. So Amanda Tronzo gaining points here at this event for the first scoring event with 1,000 points. You see she's in the lead. And she's going to have uh, a lot of challengers coming at her with some really solid women. Marco DeLago there with a good solid lead, 1,290 points after racing in Vagrain and here in St. Paul. Michael Giulianello, good solid skate for him tonight. Cameron Nas with some points in Vagrain as well as here. So uh, Scott Croxall has got 600 points. Top four guys could keep this thing going and keep it interesting the rest of the season long. Absolutely. So our next Red Bull Crash Dice event will take place in two weeks time on the natural ice track in Iveskula, Finland. The longest track of this season will host our very first ever daylight event. Can Scott Croxall continue his streak of finish first? Find out on February 3rd. All right, really looking forward to bringing you all the action from Finland. So for Brianna McShane, Reed Whiting, I'm Troy Mannering, signing off from St. Paul. See you guys all in Avescula, Finland.